Okay, I'm actually re-recording this part one of electronics. Um, <laughs> my first recording had some problems, and it's actually going to be easier for me to re-record this and try to edit a flash video, um, which is a format that uh, software compiles in. I don't care, that's fine. Um, but this is the first electronics circuit that integrates with the Raspberry Pi's GPIO utilizing um, uh, Python programming. Um, so in the oops, uh, in the magazine, <clears throat> uh, it starts off with some very uh, basic knowledge. Uh, so if you don't have a, an electronics background, uh, this gives in-depth information that you need to be able to start working with electronics uh, and moving forward from this. Um, so feel free if you um, you don't have an electronics background to read through this to get a better understanding of what you need to know uh, and they also give you uh, some specifics on some of the uh, some of the parts that are going to be used in uh, in this project such as a um, the push button momentary switch uh, an LED how an LED works um, you know, in the cathode and anode, uh, and then also the the jumpers, which uh, although are simple, still require a little bit of information on how to best utilize them. Then it goes into how to actually build the circuit. Um, and it gives you a breadboard layout. Um, now they do give you a shopping list of stuff that you should have or that you need to get uh, if you don't already have it. Um, and then once you receive those, um, you can lay it out on the breadboard. Um, my design looks a little bit different um, than this layout only because I had a little bit different momentary switch. I didn't have a double pole single throw. I, um, so I use it a little bit different, but I use the same uh, information off the schematic on, uh, on the layout. Um, now I do apologize for the low resolution. Um, I'll have some more uh, detailed pictures on how the layout is set up. But as you can see, the Raspberry Pi is connected, uh, and the circuit is set up throughout here. Um, and then it's connected to the GPIO. Um, and then here are some pictures, detailed pictures, of um, how it is set up. And as you can see, the LED that was depicted with the various resistors that allow uh, that connect through this uh, momentary switch and then this connection here um, which is the pin 11 um, input sensor uh, and then the rest of this is the pull down section of the circuit uh, keeps the pin 11 high until the button is pushed and then it goes low all of this is detailed uh, explained out in the magazine on what each part of the circuit does uh, and how it works. Um, for the most part, pin 1 uh, and pin 6 are your power positive and negative, and then your pin 11 is the one that we're going to be monitoring um, for a transition state from a high to a low digital uh, signal input. Um, and then here is the GPIO. One thing I will add into this is that, uh, like the board shows here, pin 1 is um, on the edge furthest away from the corner uh, and then the way that the pin out is counted it's pin one and then pin two is the closest to the corner of the board and then it goes into a z counting configuration of pin one pin two three four five six so on and so forth so as you can see here pin one um, you know which is my high side uh, is connected pin six which is the ground uh, is connected and then if you notice uh, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, pin 11 is connected um, to, to the board, to the circuit um, for the signal input. Um, a little bit closer detail on what we have set up. Um, and then how it's shown, you know, it goes to the breadboard. Uh, I really got to label my scenes one of these days. Uh, so then after the circuit is set up, 
Um, and then here's the explanation, logical states, what they mean. Um, the uh, GPIO actually runs off a 3.3 volt as opposed to a 5 volt. Um, and then it goes into the software. Now, the Wheezy uh, distro for Raspberry Pi does have um, Python 2.0 and Python 3.01 or 2A, whatever the heck it is, uh, installed. Make sure you're starting the right one. I'll show you um, which one it is you need to start out because if you have a 2.0 programmed in uh, and try to run it with a 3.0, um, the text is different and so um, and the, the, the functions are different so it'll actually error out and not work properly. Um, don't ask me how I figured that one out. Um, but if it is not installed, even if it is, I still recommend if you're not used to util using uh, installing software with Linux, to you can still install it without uh, any problems. Uh, it'll just reinstall right on top of it. It's not a big deal. Um, and then you can even get further practice by installing. When you go to this website, uh, it'll actually have um, the updated version on there. Uh, you can even install that again to get you some of the practice using the uh, sudo apt-get install function. Um, and then after you download the program, which the link is here, uh, then you're going to unzip it um, into, a, into this directory, move into this directory, change directory to here, the one you just created. Um, and then in that directory, you're going to run the Python setup uh, program. Now, then that will be installed, and then you're going to move out of that directory, uh, the cd dot dot, move back to the directory. Uh, and then you can go ahead and start creating the, the program. This is the program that we're going to run, or have to set up now, uh, that's going to incorporate the circuit that we created. Uh, and then it also gets into what each part of this program does. Um, you have the initial uh, header, which explains uh, what that is, reason that is there, so that it's telling it that this is a Pi program. Uh, these inputs, uh, input libraries or modules for different parts that we're going to be utilizing throughout the actual guts of the program, um, such as the time function, which we utilize down here, and then of course the um, GPIO, um, so we know what a pin 6, a pin 1, and a pin 11, it knows to keep an eye on that GPIO and how to interact with it. Uh, this here is the actual guts of it. Uh, it's going to create a, a continuous loop that um, it's going to monitor that pin 11, which you tell it here, watch pin 11. Uh, when pin 11 goes from high or true to false or low, uh, it's going to print on the screen, giggle. Um, and I can tell you this right now, when I first started doing this, I actually did giggle when it started working. Um, and then it's going to put in a two-tenths of a second time delay. The reason for this is uh, the processor works better than our button finger works. So if you press the button, it'll fill the screen with giggles um, and die, you know, deliriously um, from giggling. But this gives you a two-tenths of a second to release the button after pressing it. So you get your single giggle. Uh, if you hold it down for more than two-tenths of a second, you might get a double, um, which will probably happen because I'm going to show you um, how the, the LED works with this program as well. Okay, so um, going back to the Raspberry Pi, we're going to go ahead and open up um, here in programming. Now, you may have icons on the desktop. Um, those I lost while I was VNCing in. Uh, I gave some information on that on a previous uh, B blog. Um, it's really no problem. The start menu still has all of my um, everything that I need. Idle, just plain idle, is Python 2.0 shell. Uh, idle 3 is Python's 3.0. So make sure you are running the idle shell, idle Python shell. When it first comes up, it's going to be actual active shell. It's kind of like a um, uh, the, the terminal is. When you type something in, it runs it, um, which obviously when creating a program, we don't want to do. Uh, we want to open up a new file 
All right, and that will give you a window that you can create the file and save it, save a Python program. I've actually programmed this one in already or typed already this in. Uh, so I'm going to just go ahead and open it up. I have a few in here as I'm trying to get caught up with some of my video blogs. Um, and if you'll notice in, um, in the magazine that it you know, says save it as mybutton.py, which of course I did. And then this is the same thing that is in the magazine. Um, something that I bring out in part two, and that's why I reported it backwards, long story, uh, is that the indentation, use the indentation that comes automatically um, in this uh, Python editor. Uh, it'll be correct. The indentation that's in the magazine is slightly off. Um, it's really not a problem. It just errors out when you run it, and then it tells you where the problem's at. You go in and you fix it, and then it runs fine. Um, now, if you also notice that there's color coding throughout, um, throughout the program, that is, of course, put in by the editor. And what that does is it helps alleviate syntax errors or errors in typing or typos. Um, that is probably going to be the biggest uh, problem that you need to overcome uh, when creating a program. Typos are very common. Um, and it's typically the biggest thing you have to chase down when creating a program. Uh, so these color codings that um, let you know what different programs or, or what different functions are doing helps alleviate and separate it so you can hopefully pull out any um, syntax errors you might have. You know, you know for instance, some of the uh, input and outputs are purple, and then you notice this one says it's not because... I did a capital P instead of a lower case, a lower case P. Python is case sensitive, so if it is not um, the proper case, it'll error out saying, what are you talking about? I don't know what capital P print is. It does know what lower case pre print is. Um, so uh, since I already have the program running, now when we go to have our uh, program in and saved, um, when you go to save these, you just go to file and you go to save. Uh, I'm actually right now going to do save as, because otherwise it would just save it. I don't really care. You go to save um, the first time. If it's, you know, it says that it's, uh, it's untitled, then you type in the my button. You do not have to put in the dot pi. It will put it in automatically. Uh, I recommend, which I'll be doing later on, creating a folder for all my different uh, Python programs. That way it keeps you a little more organized. I would recommend doing the same. And now to run the program, you're going to open up Terminal, or you'll have a you'll have a icon on the desktop, or you can go into your Start and go to LX Terminal. And then in the uh, in the magazine, it, it describes out how to actually run it. Uh, you're going to be utilizing the sudo command, uh, and then you sudo to run Python. Then you're going to tell Python what program you're going to you want Python to run. So we want, of course, my button dot pi. Now it's going to look like it just sits there, and does nothing. Um, it's actually what it's doing now. It is listening to pin 11 on the GPIO uh, because pin 11 is is high right now, and so it's like okay, waiting for something to change. So on my circuit here where I have the push button, um, it is waiting for it to be toggled. When it gets toggled, um, there is that pull down circuit that I had mentioned. Uh, we'll actually make the one end low and it'll actually then turn on the LED. So if you can, so I know the resolution's poor, but if you look at the LED, you'll see it change color as each time I first push it. That's letting you know it's actually working. Um, so now, remember, our program is supposed to be giggling. So we are going to go back to, oops, all right, okay. We're going to go back to here, and if you notice, there is a ton of giggles um, because I was holding it down longer than two-tenths of a second so that you could hopefully see the LED light up. Um, and then so, of course, it prints giggle every time it goes past that two-tenths of a second that the circuit is low. Um, I can just press it once, 
And of course, now you're not going to notice it because it's gone too big on the screen. But every time you press it, and it turns giggle. Um, and that's pretty much the circuit uh, and the program. Now, to exit out of a Python program that doesn't have a automatic stop function in it, we'll get to that later. Um, and it says in the Magpie what you need to do to stop this. You're going to hold down your control button. You'll hit C, and it will go ahead and exit out, error a little bit, say keyboard interrupted, and boom, put you back into the root command. Um, and that's it. That's the nuts and bolts of this first um, first electronic circuit. Um, in part two, I have the second part of this program, which utilizes the same circuit uh, and just modifies the code a little bit uh, and produces a little bit different result from the same circuit.